everybody, Creative Katie Karen Virtual here. Welcome to my channel and an art journal tutorial. People often ask me where I get my inspiration. Today I got my inspiration from a pile of leaves that I was raking up this fall. Look at the colors. They are amazing. So I knew I just had to go and create with those colors. So instead of grabbing paint, I grabbed a whole bunch of my gel print, collage papers, different bits and bobs, and typically when I pull out sheets, I pull out three to four times as many as I need. And then I start ripping them and assembling them on the page. Now this is a page that I've taken out of my Canson Mixed Media. I believe it's nine by 12, 11 by 14, I'm not exactly sure, page. And it's non-gessoed because I'm going to collage down. So once I start arranging them, the papers, you know, sooner or later, you just have to put it down. And there is no magic to putting it down. I just want interesting colors, interesting patterns. I'm picking papers. This one is on tissue paper. Some are thicker papers, some are thinner. I'm layering them up. And as I'm going, inspiration starts to take over. You just get in the creative flow. Now initially I was going to leave white space, but I was having so much fun layering these colors and just, oh, I just loved how this was coming together that I ended up pretty much covering every part of this. And I love the look that this gives the background. You can do the same thing with pictures from a magazine that are ripped up and you can get some very interesting colors and maybe that'll spurn on. Now in some of the white areas, I wanted to introduce a little bit more yellow. So at first the one I had was very translucent. So then I grabbed my yellow oxide and I'm just filling in some of those white spots. I'm also going over uh, some of the gel prints that had a lot of white. I didn't want white. Remember, you know, the inspiration. I wanted lots of luscious, beautiful color. This is also a very quick way to get a background together. Now at this point, I had no idea where I was going with this. I was thinking, oh, I could do fall leaves or a butterfly, or I was thinking I was going to do some negative painting. Once that was all dry, I decided I wanted to add a little more pattern, a little more drama. So I grabbed my black paint and a few TCW stencils, and I'll link those down below in the description box. This one's called Numbers Jumble, and I love it. The boldness, it's one I don't use enough. And I'm putting it on, I think, three, three different times. Now remember, I don't know what I'm going to end up doing on this page. So right now, I'm just focused on getting a gorgeous background together. This one's Fan Flower. It's one of the cake and cookie stencils. They're five inches and they're the perfect size. And I'm putting some purple through this because I wanted to introduce a little more purple into the background. Some of the gel prints also had stencils. This one's geotiles, I believe, and I'm just adding a little bit more. And again, I'm putting it in three different areas. Extending it a little bit. I wanted that high contrast. 
And if you go back and look at the inspiration, this page really is like that pile of leaves. Just cutting off, trimming off the excess. And just shading the edges. I like to frame it. Sometimes that helps me come up with what I want to do next. Because I know that inevitably I'm going to be darkening the edges, shading them. Wanted to add a little bit more pattern. This is in the some of the gel prints in the background. And I'm using a very light Naples yellow. Just adding a little bit more interest. And this pushes back when I put it on top of the numbers jumble and some of the black, it pushes that back just a little bit. Because I don't, that's not going to be the focal point. I love the glorious colors that came out of this. Now I'm just shading the top there and I've taped off the coiled edges just to get a straight edge and keep keep it out of the coils. Now I've taken this Canson Mixed Media journal apart. I've taken it off the coils to make it and then once they are all done I will put them together. Then I remembered I wanted to do something with puzzle pieces as I'm thinking and so I put those on and I find a quote that I love that says sometimes when things are falling apart, they may actually be falling into place. And I like the play on words because it's very fall or autumn colors. Now I'm painting some sheets, the colors that are in the background. I wanna cut the puzzle pieces out of pretty much solid colors. I could have traced those puzzle pieces on there and done a, ne a negative painting technique, and then, but I changed my mind. I thought I'll continue on with collage. This started with a collage background, and now I'm collaging the focal image down. And I'm mixing the paints onto this copy paper. So I'm putting the yellow with the red, and I like mixing the colors. You get a, a deeper, richer tone of paint than if you just take it straight from the tube. So there's some overlapping. The other one I use the deep violet with the orange and then you get this gorgeous rose color that I, I just can't get in a tube straight on. I'm kind of dry brushing a little bit on here, stamping with my shelf liner just to get some textural marks. I'm just adding water to make the paint go on a little bit better. But this is, I'm just doing this on copy paper. And I, I thought about using some of my gel prints, but a lot of my gel prints have too much pattern. And I really wanted the puzzle pieces to be, to stand out a little bit more off that very busy background. I'm just dry brushing the colors on, stamping some of that color on. introducing a little bit of that yellow because of course the leaves aren't pure red or pure yellow they're they're kind of mottled and I just wanted to replicate that in some way So once those sheets were dry, I'm going to trace out 
different shapes of those puzzle pieces. Now these puzzle pieces, I believe I bought a cut file from Silhouette, but you could grab a puzzle, you know, um, with bigger pieces and use that as your tracers. So I'm just folding the pages here because I'm gonna trace once and cut and have four of each. And I don't know how many puzzle pieces I want to use or which ones exactly are gonna work for my final composition. So I'm just tracing them out. And as you can see, I'm tracing on the back side of it because it's white and it's easy to see. If I was tracing on the other side, it may not be as visible. And since the puzzle pieces aren't going to actually have to fit together, I don't need to be so very precise with my cutting. So then here I am cutting through four layers of paper at once. There are so many quotes in Pinterest. I went and I Googled and I said quotes with puzzle pieces, quotes, and that's what, and then I found several, and then I picked this one because it alluded to fall. It had the word falling into place. But I did find many, many others that in all likelihood you'll see turn into an art journal page somewhere down the road. And then I've got all these colors and just playing with the composition. Do I want it here? Do I want it there? And I'm a little embarrassed to tell you how much fussing I did with that. Do I want it in the middle? So I took a picture of it in the middle and then I took a picture of it on the side and then I can look. It kind of gives you the view from a distance and sometimes that's a better than you can see which one you like better. I absolutely love how this page ended up, but I am a little sad that a lot of the background ended up getting covered up because I had so many puzzle pieces on here. So I play, like, seriously, I played with these pieces so much. And then, of course, you get, I got other ideas while I was doing that. And my ideas or the steps just grew. So I decided that I'm going to want to have these edges shaded. So I'm using the floating acrylic technique and I'm shading around all the puzzle pieces with black. This is going to make these puzzle pieces stand out from the background. Remember, the background is the exact same colors. And if I want these puzzle pieces to stand out, this is one of the ways to do it. And you can see how much, what a difference that is. This is also a great, if you're learning how to do the floating acrylic technique, doing it with an open piece like this is a great way to practice. You're getting lots of practice and it's easy. It's a little harder to do when it's on the page. You can see how they stand out. And no, I'm not going to make you watch me shade all of these puzzle pieces. Mm -hmm. 
And I'm shading with the acrylic paint here and this technique because I'm going to be gluing these down and I with wet medium and I don't want to reactivate if I had shaded them with the Stabilo Oil pencil or watercolor. And you can see the difference there. Then I get the idea that I'm going to put some script on some, if not all, of the puzzle pieces. In the end, I ended up using the script on all the puzzle pieces that I used on this page because I really like the look. And this stamp, which I'll link below in the description box, has dream and the word love in it. And it, it fits the theme. The white looked a little harsh, so I got some gold paint, watered it down, and gave it a wash of gold just to bring it more into the whole color family. Would you have left it white? So I'm happy with it, how it looks. I think it's an improvement, so I'm just going to go and paint all of them with this light wash of gold. Warning, when you do paint over top of a printout of text, you have to, you push back some of the text. The text isn't as bold. What you could do is paint the sheet of paper gold and then feed that through the printer if that's something you're willing to do with your printer. You have to make that decision yourself because I guess there could be little bits of paint that might fall into the printer. You could also print it out on colored paper. Now I wanted to brighten up the page a little bit, the purples, bring it out. So I'm just putting a little bit of that deep violet paint, watering it down and rubbing it where the purple is just to make that color pop a little bit more. So now I think I have, I've figured out the composition, I've figured out the details and what I want to do, so I'm in the home stretch. I'm using TCW Matte Gel Medium. Now the puzzle pieces and the words are all cut out of just plain old copy paper, so it bends a little bit, so it takes a little while to get everything to lie, lay flat. And I'm putting some of the puzzle pieces kind of falling off the edges. This page from beginning to end took about an hour and a half, an hour 45. And I tell you that so you know that it's not simply a matter of 25 minutes that you're watching the video. There's a lot of steps to it. And if just because you don't see it, I, I you know, I want to be clear that it does take time. Just so you can be realistic when your page is taking you a little bit longer. And once everything's down with the matte gel medium, and I've dried it, cut off the excess, I decide I want to bring out these puzzle pieces more. And now, because I'm not going to put any more wet medium on this, I'm using a the General's Charcoal Pencil. This is extra soft, and I'm just 
I love this pen, charcoal pencil. It is so dark. You get such a rich dark line. And I'm shading where I did put some of the floating acrylic as well as where the puzzle pieces overlap. And you're going to see that and around the sentiment. I love that must look when you rub the charcoal. And I like the look of using the floating acrylic technique and the charcoal pencil. But if you can't do the floating acrylic technique, you can just wait till this stage to shade those puzzle pieces. And here I'm shading how they overlap. So I'm giving it maybe the, the depth or perspective. So it looks like one is on top of the other. Make sure that your pieces are completely dry. If it's not completely dry and you go in with the charcoal pencil, you may rip the paper. Loving how that looked. So I grab my gold paint that I have thinned down and my fan brush, and I'm going to splatter with gold paint. I love this page. I hope you do too. I'm just going to grab, take the painter's tape and you can see it's taking some of the page off. That's because I didn't put it on my sweater or my jeans beforehand. And it was really tacky. Close-ups are coming. Give me a thumbs up. Follow me on Instagram. Leave me a comment. And always, go be creative.